I think that these diseases, particularly Alzheimer's, neurodegenerative disease in general, these, they don't discriminate. They don't care how much money you have. They don't care what kind of car you have. They don't care how many followers people have. They don't discriminate and I don't think medicine should either. I think that when we see suffering and when we see pain, we should do our best to solve it. You know, so this, these are things that we have to do now. These are things that are a moral imperative and they're things that everybody needs to be able to have access to. So it's gotta be affordable. So for Alzheimer's, what we do is we, we vaccinate people on, a, on two different schedules right now. We're in phase 2A trials. Um, and we vaccinate them uh, and we, we expect that what we will see is uh, that everyone that receives the live vaccine or the, 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 the non-placebo, the vaccine, will, will generate robust antibody responses to it. And in our phase 1 trial, which we published the data, everyone that we dosed did see that. And not only did they see that, but they saw that with no immunosenescence. So, you know, everybody knows that when they get older, they scrape their knee, it takes longer to heal than when they're a little kid. That's because your immune system slowly breaks down, right? For whatever reasons, people debate it. I think some of them are known. But in the vaccine world, it's the same. So normally, if you're 30 and you get a vaccine for flu, let's say, and then you're 60 and you get the same vaccine, you get a lower response level when you're 60. With our vaccine and this synthetic platform, it stays the same, not exactly, but there's no age age-induced variants, which means there's no immunosenescence. So that's that's magic because a lot of these people are older. So the people that are currently suffering the ailment, it's great to be able to, to generate a robust antibody response even well into their, their later years or into the, the critical years, I would say, of treatment, right? Everybody's talking about living longer. And I want people to think at least a little bit about living better because a lot of these people, including my grandmother, die with this horrible disease. And when that happens, they're not thinking, I want to live a longer time. So what I think we need to do is actually make sure that we can increase the quality and the quantity of this great thing that we call life.